Cristiano Ronaldo, yes! Yes! David Beckham has done it, big time! Seva, welcome. Cheers, hello. Uh, good episode with Zach Anderson last week on a uh, good friend of yours. Um, and he, uh, he came across really well and gave us a really good insight into his, his football career. Yeah, Zach's a good boy. He's an awesome talker. And um, we had a lot of fan mail from a lot of women out there. <laughs> He's a very good looking human, isn't he? <laughs> he goes no right. wonder you let him stay with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, he goes right, Zach. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Now, today's uh, in studio guest is current coach, head coach at Marconi, Peter Sakanis. Seka, welcome. G'day, guys. How are you? How you going, yeah, Seka? Good, good. Um, how's it been at Marconi this year, pal? Yeah, it's been reasonably good. We've our performance have been pretty good, but um, you know we just uh, we've been leading games and letting leads slip, and um, we've had a four draws, a loss, and a win. Um, it keeps us in touch, but um, we know we're better than that, so um, we'll just keep improving the little things, and we'll be right. Yeah, sweet. Now we've got Secker on to take us uh, right back. Right back to his NSL days and uh, we're going to get on to his coaching career and uh, playing for Australia and, and all that. So we can't wait for this tonight, eh, Seba? Yeah, it's going to be good. We, we've been waiting a while for this. And he so. also coached you. Yeah, and you he played with him. Coached me, played with him and uh, won, a, won a few things together. Now, I'm going to get to... Se- <laughs> I used to have hair, now I don't. <laughs> yeah. I can tell why. <laughs> can tell why. Seca's got a story about that too, Seba, so we're going to save that, right, until we get on to, uh, oh, until we get on to Bankstown. Now, Seca, take us back uh, to where it all started for you uh, growing up as a kid and then obviously uh, getting to St George uh, back in the day and, and tell us how you got there, mate. Yeah, look, I played for a local club in Gladsville when I was five years old. Um, I was walking down to the pitch with my dad and there was some kids playing soccer. My dad, my dad said, you want to play? And I had sandals on. So, um, you know, those old-fashioned sandals. Um, and that was my first session with sandals on. And um, that was sort of the start of my football um, as a young kid, five years old. Um, played a few years there and ended up at St George Olympic, some other local clubs um, where I lived. And then St George, I went to St George, the local St George Budapest, which is yep. Frank Arrock's baby back then. Um, started playing there from, say, the round, around 14, 15, um, and then progressed into Frank's uh, apprenticeship scheme that he had there and played first-team football just before they um, they folded and then I moved on from there. But, um, yeah, St George had played a big part in my in my youth career, definitely. Yeah, and you, you debuted at a young age there, didn't you? 17, yeah. 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 And how was that coming up against, I guess, grown men at the time when football was at, probably at its toughest, yeah? Yeah, I mean, looking back on it, it was, it was sort of a dream come true. I never really had the aspirations to play. I didn't really think ahead. I was just enjoying the moment and playing football. And I... I enjoyed it and I, I improved and I was good at it at the time and um, and it, things just progressed without thinking where I think these days um, people have too much expectation and, and that's where they falter because things aren't happening in a timely manner. Yep. Um, I think mine just progressed and um, before you know it I was you know playing against South Melbourne uh, for St George coming on. We won that game I remember fondly and um, and just you know once you play first team football then you get noticed and things happen from there. Yeah. Back, back then the league was crazy. I, mean, I was a Marconi ball boy growing up. It was probably actually no, it was probably a little bit after that. But I remember the size of the, the players back then they were just they were, they were just completely different. A eh? different body shape to what they are now. Yeah, definitely. And and as a kid going into there, I mean, you had to have some physical presence um, because they tested you. And I remember, you know, not only St George. St George is a little bit different because I was a young kid and I was protected by Frank. But when I went to Olympic. The year after, I mean, I had guys like, you know, um, Andy Burnell mm. and guys like that that would kick me to, you know... Yeah, at training. Kick me. And yeah. um, I dusted myself and got up. And I think you earn the respect from those players. And once you earn that respect, then you're then you're set. But if you don't react in the right way, um, then it's a, you, it'll be tough for you. And take us into that Sydney Olympic dressing room then. And, and as you said, you just mentioned Andy Burnell. Mm. And, and, and for a young kid, I guess, for yourself, how, how, how was that? Yeah, it was uh, it was daunting because um, it's a Greek kid that that followed this club for years. His dad took him to the games. I remember going to Pratton Park when there was riots and all that sort of stuff. You know the big games, and all of a sudden you're rubbing shoulder with Gary Meyer, who was who's played for many years, and all of a sudden he's my teammate. Yeah. So you know, from a young kid watching, and then all of a sudden your teammate. It's it's. Yeah, it's it's goosebump stuff. So um, yeah, it was it was an honour to to sort of get there. But again, it was one of those things. There was no expectation. There mm. was you know it just things progressed. And um, yeah, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed um, my 
initial part of being part of that team, it was tough. It wasn't easy. I didn't get into the team straight away. There was okay. many, many obstacles, many you know, um, many times that you know you weren't playing and you're playing in the youth team and and you had to fight your way through. And you know, it was. I think it was a the survival of the fittest or the toughest back then. Yeah. And you talk about that too, right? Yeah, 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 definitely. But it's even in, in his personality of like letting things take their course and let it be. Like mm-hmm. you said, if you put too much expectation and stuff like you start growing impatient, you start making moves and decisions and phone calls that can bite you in the ass later on. So, yeah, and you know all about that because yeah. you've been through it all, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm a father now and I sort of, you know, with a kid that we'll probably talk about later, but uh, that I can share that. It's not about the football for me. In, in, in football, you've got talent. You've got a lot of talented players and a lot, and you know yourself, Seba, a lot of talented players, probably better than we were as as, as kids, never made it mm. because they just didn't have that hunger or that, that resilience to, to go that next I, level. I've said on this before and I said it to Swadey, you can tell who are wired differently. Some of yep. them are, are, are proper wired differently Straight where away. they're just mentally on yep. and, they're gonna, and they know they're going to make it. Yeah, well, it's, it's not that they know. It's that they refuse to for another answer. Give up. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, you, it's easy to say I'm going to make it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do. I mean, I say I'm going to go to the gym every day, but I don't. But, <laughs> but, but I know so deep, I. <laughs> deep down inside, I know that's not real. That's just talk. Yeah, but it's, yeah. talk. It, it's just it's just set in 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 your brain. It's not about discussing it. It's about it just happens because it's in you. Yeah, yeah. And um and and then you head up the uh, up north to Newcastle. Yeah. So I was Olympic for nine years. Um, and there was some interest from uh, Newcastle at the time um, and things weren't going well for me at the time at Olympic with certain coaching staff and whatnot so I thought it was a, a good change for me. Um, I did have a, a, a property up the coast which I could sort of utilise but I was sort of commuting up and down initially okay. but then settled in. I was there for four years uh, under Ian Crook and well originally it was... Um, uh, what's his name? Because uh, Crook was the second. Then no, what was the other he? one? You know him. It was that Marconi. Schaefer. No. Nah. Lee Sterry. Lee Sterry. That's right, yeah. Uh, Lee yeah. Sterry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Sterry. Lee Sterry um, dragged yep. me. So it was Newcastle Breakers. Yep. Um, and then I didn't get the chance to play for him because that's when it changed. So I got taken up there and the whole thing changed to Newcastle United. Okay. Uh, and Con Constantine t- yep. took over at the time. So... Um, played there with Lee and then the three years after that Ian Crook was the coach with Gary Ben Egmont as the assistant um, and I had three really good years the last year that of the National League I got player of the year for Newcastle yep. so I had um, an enjoyable year and I still got mates up there and, and it was they treated me well up there and it was a good time of my career you guys had a quality team up there you had a lot of good players I think yeah. Andy Harper was playing yeah Andy well. Harper Von of Voglia um, the list goes on um, yeah, and even the local boys you know some of the local boys like Andy Roberts and um, was Rob Mark Middleby? Wilson uh, Rob, Rob, yeah, Middleby, Rob, yeah, yeah, Rob Middleby, yeah, yeah, he he was there at was um, there. one point. Like even Deansy, he Deansy's Deansy, still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. He's part of the Steve furniture. Eagleton, Eagleton, yeah. Was Joel Griffiths there? At the Joel time? Griffiths, Adam yeah. Griffiths, Ryan Griffiths, the yeah. whole lot of them. But the so, everyone, they're all there. Yeah, they're all <laughs> they're there. All there. Yeah. Bill Charme, <laughs> the goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had um, and look, we um, they still have old boys um, get together. Oh yeah. So you know, at the games, um, they they invite all the boys back and they and they look after us and. Um, we enjoy getting together. That was a good stadium to play at, wasn't it, when it was Brilliant. packed? It was so hard to go there and win. We used to have so a good hard. crowds, especially when you're winning, and yeah. we were. Um, you know, I remember 13,000, 14,000, no problem against um, anyone. Yeah, um, right. We, we went winning. there once for Marconi mm. when, when Krencevic was there. Like, we, we, it was like, okay. 2 nil down. I don't know if you yeah. remember the game you were playing. I think it was 1 or 2 nil in 5, 10 minutes. We're like, far out, man. Unbelievable. The, once they got momentum, you can't. You couldn't beat it. Yeah, we were yeah. tough up there, tough. definitely. I know the huge year. Yeah, that's it. It's got to be. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. That's how it's got to be. Uh, and then um, uh, Bankstown as a player first. And so, yeah, so the, obviously the National League sort of had a halt. Evaporated. Um, and then I think obviously the NPL became the place to play if you wanted to sort of keep ticking over. And a lot of players like Sash Petrovsky and I can, name, Carl, all of them. I can name them all, they all came down and played at that level. So that was a pretty high level competition. Pretty high standard. Yeah. I went as a player to Bankstown. Um, uh, it's close to home. Why Bankstown, um, Pete? I never, uh, I never asked. Well, look, it, I'll be honest, Bonnie Rigg sort of 
made a play but never eventuated okay. and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Bankstown came along and had a chat with them and, you know, there was a great bunch of guys there and I yeah. thought, you know what, this is good. I'll, I'll keep me ticking over to see what would happen. Um, and and that's that was the okay. decision. Plus plus they paid me well. <laughs> um, um, so and they, and and that back then they were, they were paying very well at the yeah, time for for you know decent players because they you know they they, they wanted, wanted to, to have win a crack. games. Yeah, yeah. Every every club in that in that Premier League back then, or what was it called? The it was, was it wasn't called the Premier League. No, I oh, can't remember what it was. But they all had like five or six players that were already had deals high with the profiles, A League. High profile, yeah. So yeah. They're, paying, they're paying massive money to keep these players. In five, so they weren't going weeks. up to the A League at the time. No, because they, the preseasons was. St- yeah, it, was it, it wasn't. Pay. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't planned. So there wasn't. It wasn't next season. It was beyond that. Right. And no one really knew. So yeah, players wanted to keep ticking over, oh, earning course, an income. Yeah. Right. These players wanted to earn an income, and these clubs had egos and wanted to win, and the crowds came because. It was like it was massive good, crowds. Yeah. yeah, we got that st- stories from Sever and Flea about yeah. Bankstown. Now let's run into that. Yeah. Uh, we'll, 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 you obviously then play a coach there. Yeah. So uh, after about three, four games, yeah, um, the coach Andy Papoulis at the time um, had to go back to Cyprus for some reason, family reasons, personal reasons, and um, yeah, um, Louis Postolovsky, who's still a friend of mine, who was on the board at the time, he pulled me aside at a restaurant function thingy what was happening I think they they cornered me um, <laughs> and they said look we're losing our coach we want you to be the coach and he goes well done congratulations without even me saying yes right? <laughs> so I didn't even have time to think double wage <laughs> yeah. I didn't even have time to think yeah double wage yeah yeah so I said look it's something that I want to do um, I wasn't sure if it was the right time I yeah. didn't th- again Progression, right? Timing. Never, I, I never even sat to think. I want to coach. How I'm going to get there? Oh, you it's weren't just, ready to. You didn't. You weren't well, exercising the idea. Not at the time. I knew I wanted to. Yeah. Like, does that make sense? So I knew that I would be. That's I knew point. it was in me. But that but, was early. But it wasn't. It wasn't me planning on it. Like sometimes you have a plan, right? Yeah. This one wasn't. This wasn't a plan yet because I, I was still a player. I still felt like I was playing. Maybe national league, A league, whatever it was. So that was sort of sprung on me. I thought, you know what? Why not, right? Yeah. I, the boys were good. It was going to be difficult. I knew it was going to be difficult from being a teammate to being yeah. a coach. Yeah. That's um, and that was going to be a challenge. And it, it all happened very quickly. But then I, I you, took it on. You found the best second you could possibly find, eh? The best. The best second. Second assistant. Yeah. Best. So I can. Yeah. Your, your Pete, right think, hand. Your right hand, man. I think Pete explained that to you. But yeah. So I, I was thrown into it. And I'll give you the story. So the first game. We played St George and we we won one nil and it was so mentally exhausting for me being a player and a coach in the first game of that sort of career type and I was off my feet like exhausted because I was thinking not only for Who myself comes off. yeah 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 the whole thing right and the, and the pressure of you know being at this club with high expectations and, and the crowds were crowd, massive too the crowds were you know a few thousand people at Jensen every game at yeah. least. Um, so there was a, that expectation, but the expectation on myself as well because yeah. I like to. Uh, I'm pretty hard on myself, and I was exhausted. Second game we lost. We were winning one nil up at the Central Coast, and um, Buddy Farrow scored the first one, and then we lost like six one. Wow! Second game, and you can imagine now. I heard about that? Now you can, and then there was a, there was some senior players in the change room having you know, having some punch ons and what whatnot, and I won't. I won't you still, name the, the you still had the A League players that were about yeah, to go. That's yeah, 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 and, yeah, I, and yeah. I'm I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, what have I done here, <laughs> right? And and you know, as you know, the 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 board's probably thinking, have we made the right decision? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm thinking, have I done the right thing? How do I handle this? Right, I'm a senior player. I was a skipper. I was a captain. So I sort of had that skill. I settled it down, and then um, the following week, I think it was when. You, I think you came to training. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and then I was speaking to Flea in the meantime. He was having problems. Um, and my assistant, George Athanasis, was my assistant, said, look, I can't do this anymore. I've got to sort of head off for work. What about Flea? He's having issues. Spoke to Flea. Um, it didn't take long. He had some stuff going on there. And um, yep. before you knew it, he was, he was with me. And to be honest, since then we, we, we clicked straight away and really haven't sort of looked back from there in terms of how we operate and working together and, and the chemistry we have and, and how it all works. I think Flea and I, we rocked up the same night. Same night, that's yeah, I right. I think so, yeah. 
And Flea takes us back to that. So we got Flea's point of view. Now we'll get the head coach's point of view. Yep. They, they, Flea talked about training and Seva talks about training. That yep. It was just different at that time. Yeah. Was that, is that right? Yeah. And and this is the stuff that I sort of discussed at, at Marconi at the moment. Which it's a different era. It's a different mindset. But you can still train and work hard in terms of how you train. Yeah. Um, yeah, so back then, obviously, our sessions and the world mini World Cups, you probably heard. Yeah, yeah. The infamous World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was no hold bars. And don't forget, I still was playing. Yeah. Right? And so I was, were you kickable? I, oh, yeah. Well, I was kickable, but... <laughs> oh, he... Uh, I, I you gave, gave back. I gave... You don't want to be caught in a tackle with your mate. <laughs> yeah. So I kept people honest. But yeah. It was easier to do it because I was on there. Yeah, yeah. On the sideline now, it's like... You want to kick it? Yeah, I want to kick someone, <laughs> right? But it was easier then because I could go in and physically... You could make a difference. ...lead from the front, yeah, right? Yeah. Show them how it's done, right? Because I could at the time. So they're definitely, they were definitely very competitive and everyone wanted to win. And I, I had winners in the team. Yeah, and I'll, I'll ask the question, how, how was it being a player coach? So how, how did you pull yourself apart on the field as a player and as a coach? Did Was there just that much trust in Flea on the sideline and you were able to let the team, the coaching go when he turned up? Look, I think the coaching's done during the week. I think coaching can, is done. Coaching's also done at halftime, and coaching's done. It was easier for me to coach on the park because I was being, I was a leader already. I was a captain already in terms of my stature as a player before I got there. So I could lead around from the park. Or so I felt like so much easier I could do that. And sometimes I find myself on the sideline, kicking every ball, being part of the old action. I think I coach better when I'm doing that on the sideline because I feel like I'm part of the game instead of just sitting there and watching and, and making calls. So I still have that sort of element still in my game. But I found it pretty easy. And me and Flea were on the same wavelength in terms of we had the plan on, you know, it was easy back then because we had a... The team was sort of set. And we knew who we could do what, and if someone got injured, who would do what. And it was, you know, it's very rare that I'd come to the sideline and make a call that was out of sort of out of what we thought. Yeah. And sometimes I would be so worn out, I'll just say, Pete, just make the call. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. And I trusted that he'd make the right one. Look, we didn't get him right all the time, um, but you know, if I trust someone to make the call, I'll back him on that call. Yeah. And you talk about that too, right? Yeah. 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 I, I, I can't, I can't remember one that you got wrong that you, that you had wrong. No, we took a lot of punts, but people would look oh, and we, think we won every game of the year from that. that yeah. Yeah. We, we didn't, didn't lose. We didn't lose. That's no. we, all the way to the final. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. We went just, yeah. We and didn't. that's a pretty big moment for you, I guess yeah. as well then as a coach, you've yeah. gone from playing or play a coach yeah. to yeah. winning yeah. a title. Yeah, well, it's important you win every game when you're new because th- that's when people, are <laughs> that's when that's when people are looking to see if you're capable, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, and it's sort of sink or swim. So, look, I was fortunate to have a really good side there. Um, you have to manage it. Um, there would have been of, some egos in there too, no egos, doubt. A lot of egos, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, no, there was a lot of egos. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. A lot, a lot of egos, but it. it <laughs> It, it, it was a good balance, right? Yeah, yeah. And they're all winners. And yeah. when you're winning, it's easier to it's easier yeah. to manage. It's when you're losing, and this is where, this is when you coach. When you're losing and things aren't going well, that's that's coaching. Because yeah. I've sort of had my ups and downs in, in, in the years that I've coached. We'll talk about that earlier because you need the characters to be able to pull certain pe- people together. Because it's hard, it's hard to Correct. bounce back after. All Correct, this. and you, and you see, you lose your change room after yeah. a few few losses. You, it, there's also the politics of what happens in the in the yeah. boardroom um, yeah. on how you handle the boardroom and yeah. how you handle things. Look, I I just keep it simple. I just know the players I want. Um, when I speak to the board about any job, um, I tell them what I need, how I want it. No excuses. If you can't deliver that, then I can't give you what I want and you can't hold me accountable. Yeah. Give me what I want, hold me accountable, and I've got no problem. Yeah, with if that. it fails, then it's but on don't, me. But don't tell me to do this, do that, and be a puppet because I won't take the job in the first place. Is that how you got a good relationship now with Marconi now? Like, uh, yeah. yeah, well, any club I've been to, I've been, when I was at Bankstown, I was there for six years, yeah. all right? Um, I'm Greek. They're a Macedonian club. Yes, yeah, so right. really, historically, um, though, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, for me, I got no problem with it. Yeah. Like, they obviously didn't have a problem, problem. with it, yeah. and they saw that I treated the club and, and where I was at like my own. Um, and they saw I put all the effort in there. They knew, they saw that even when I played, I played yeah. for the jersey, if you like. Mm. Um, and 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 they appreciate and respected that, and that's all I wanted. Yeah. Right? If I'm losing and I'm not doing well, I take responsibility. 
Yeah. I never shirked away from that. But um, it, if we did, in the, lead, the years leading into it, they always backed me because they knew I was there for the right reasons. Now, there was no other agendas until a certain point after six and a half years, the board changed and then that changed. Yeah, yeah. and it's a different and, idea. And it was and time, I, I sort of made a decision that it was time to go because I can't work in that environment. But that always happens. It probably would happen, like you said before, at Sydney Olympic. It happened so, at the Olympic, yeah, you know, after two years. That's it. Yeah, yeah, so exactly let's right. take us, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll take it there. Yeah. Then back at, back to Sydney Olympic yeah. as head coach, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so when that sort of falling apart, George Giannaris, who was, who was heading Sydney Olympic at the time, um, who's still a mate of mine. Again, all these guys that I've worked with are still good mates of mine and okay. have a lot of good relationships. Yeah, I haven't burned any bridges. Obviously, guys that did the wrong thing, we've got no time for, but the guys that were good and, and were there for the right reasons and, and we've got a, still a good relationship. Um, so Sydney Olympic, um, two years into it, George decided to sort of step down. He had a bit of pressure. He was putting all the money in. Um, without going too far into it, I just saw the writing on the wall. Mm. The new guys coming in had a different view or different path, different agenda, and I just said, Pete, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stay here. And, and I made the conscious decision and he backed me and we walked. Uh, people made rumours up, whatever they wanted to mm. make up, that we're going to go somewhere else, take players, whatever. Didn't happen. Um, I, I took four years off. Four again. years, yeah. Um, That's... And, and part of that four years was obviously spending time with my family because my kids were young and setting up my business um, and coaching my son at that time in my spare time. Yeah. So and then we go straight in, into Marconi now? Yeah. yeah. So Marconi offered me a f- few times to come over um, at different times. Some It wasn't the right time. I remember speaking to you about that. You're like, oh, it's just, it just doesn't... Look, I'll be honest. When I went to Olympic, Marconi offered me to go. Um, but I wanted to go to Olympic. I had to yeah. settle to score, right? So to settle to, to settle. Right, um, scored to settle um, because I left there not in the best as a player, not the way I wanted to. Yep. I thought I, this is my opportunity. Make amends to coach. I look, I, I, I supported, I captained, I played, and then I and coach, coach. So you ticked all the boxes. Yeah, I did everything I could, and I won the championship in the first year. Um, the cups. We won the with minor premiership, grand finals. Um, did it pretty easy. Won cups there, um, and. Bankstown, unfortunately, were relegated the same year. Right. So, right, bit of, bit of karma. Bit of sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and they still haven't recovered. And that's the facts, right? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not making up anything. No, that's the facts. Um, and at Olympic, we we were very successful. Did really well. Um, then, after two years there, um, we discussed that we changed. But Marconi now, um, yeah, they just. Um, I've gone there. They, they, I've basically said what I needed. You know, I've, I need my assistant. This is this is not negotiable. I've knocked back other jobs half-heartedly, gone in and spoken, and they said, "No, we can't have your assistant. We've got to do this. We've got to do that." I said, "No, no deal." And Pete was saying, "Pete, take the job, even if they don't want me for whatever reason." I said, "No." Yeah, that's so not the, it's not the deal. Yeah, is it that trust with Flea? Um, like he, you know, he's in a back yard. Like, is it? Well, you need that. Yeah. In football, it, look, in anything, you need guys that have got your back, yeah. right? And I test people, most of my staff, you know, if, if they're not trustworthy or even players are not trustworthy, if anyone tries to undermine, I've, you've got to act on that. Yeah, yeah. And you've got, to, you've got to make sure that everyone around you has got the same sort of folks. Not easy. The bigger the club, the bigger yeah. the, the, bigger the scope. Yeah, yeah, all right? But, um, but the guys that are there are back me. Look, I, I, we got them really good. We, we got them promoted. promoted yeah. right? We got yeah. in there at a, at a tough time. We got in there. Uh, it was the right, I thought it was the right challenge for us. Um, and we got them promoted. And, and because of that, they've obviously saw what we can do, what we're capable of, and they respect it. Yeah. And, but no, it doesn't stop there because obviously there's expectations, and, and I have expectations as yeah. well. And you say, you, you still say that you feel for players that haven't been coached by Flea and Secker as, yeah, as, as, I as a do. team. I, 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 um, I've said it a few times now, I feel sorry for the players that haven't had the privilege to, pl- like to play underneath you. And it's the honest truth. Anyone who's played under you guys mm. will always walk away and say, a time in my life. Yeah, look, it's, it's we, we 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 enjoy training. We make it enjoyable. Yeah. And but but I'm pretty tough. I mean, we, we have a set, certain level of expectation and get the best out of people. You know, players have been pissed off if I can say that. Um, yeah. Pissed off with us. Um, but in the long term, because we, the way we do things, it's fair and honest, and sometimes it doesn't go their way. 
I'm still friends with pretty much all players, even the ones I've let go, yep. still have that level of respect. You know, as long as you're honest, and it's, again, it's unfortunately it's my opinion as the coach, and I'm, I'm the one making the call. Sometimes you fall on the wrong side of that, but I, I still have a pretty good relationship with most people, I think. In regards to Marconi, obviously you played a lot of, a lot against Marconi yep. growing up and that. Now yep. that you're in the club, you know the insides, you know the people, you know how, like, just physically the scale of the club from yep. the backfields and everything. Yep, yep. You can, you can now understand why Marconi back in the day in the NSL was the Holy Grail. Yep. Like, it, it, it would have been... It, it, it's it's the it place to still play yep. coach and yep. that and yep. you you understand that yeah now, look I, look I came from you know me and I'll give you a story before we went to Marconi me Flea you know we used to pretty much do everything yeah right? Could, couldn't get the staff budgets whatever we did everything picking up cones whatever we need to do yeah, to get the get job done, done right yep. we rolled up to Marconi first day there we sit in the boardroom there's these about 10, 12 guys standing sitting around in all the tracksuits with these guys all right. I mean, flea looking at each other. <laughs> and then uh, Rob Carniato was starting to juicing. Well, he's the manager. He's the gear steward. Yeah. He's the assistant gear steward. He's the assistant assistant gear steward. <laughs> Physio, trainer, masseur. And he just... And I'm, I'm looking at flea. I go, what do we do? <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's a it's different level, right? Yeah. Um, and it's always been like that. And, and, yeah. and now that you're there, no different to Olympic and whatnot, everyone wants to go to the palace and, and, and play well and beat you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you're spoiled, right? And sometimes when you're spoiled, it's it can give you a negative effects, mm. right? So, so you when you have everything, um, there's an expert uh, expectation, expectation. Uh, a different level, which I enjoy. Um, it'd be very difficult for me now to coach my and go the other way. Yeah, okay. Um, now that I've sort of started from the bottom, um, when I say bottom, that's all due respect to all the clubs that are. Of bottom. course, yeah, we get but it. Gone to gone to that level with everything at your fingertips and, and, and they give me no excuse. Um, everything I ask for, and I'm reasonable, right? I'm not... I'm not asking I'm, for the I'm, I'm, I, To be honest, I've cut budgets yeah. uh, because when I walked in there, I, I fell off my chair. I said, we shouldn't be paying this. And, and they're looking at me think that's the first time that's happened, right? Yeah. Because people are happy to spend someone else's money, but yeah. I'm not because <laughs> I, I don't think it's right. So they respect that. A little bit, yeah, a, a level of that. respect there yeah. as well from yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yes. Um, I'll ask you then, is it harder to be a player or a coach? Mm. Or, uh, answer, and what do you find better now? Look, there's nothing like playing. Let's get that right. Playing, right? Yeah. Playing's the ultimate, um, especially if you're fortunate enough to play at a high level, play in front of crowds, do all that sort of stuff, travel, do all that, right? Great experience. Uh, I think coaching is tougher only because you... You're not only looking after yourself, you're responsible for everybody. Mm. When you lose, it comes down to you. All the results come down to you, the way you play. Whereas a player, yeah, you can hide, you can get away with it. You might get pinned out for performance. But overall, you take that responsibility. Mentally, um, you take the whole responsibility. It's tougher. Um, rewarding. Yep. When you're doing well, very rewarding. It's very similar to... It's probably just... When you finish playing, it's, it's probably so... You, you have football in your life. That's sort of the next, the next thing you can do to stay in touch with the game mm, and the still be, you know, in that change room, feeling that every kick of the, the ball, the change, the change room, mate. feeling winning, feeling losing, having that sort of um, those emotions and seeing there. reactions for Re- your reactions. Life, and and now I've get I get satisfaction with these young boys that I've coached. You know, uh, even the, in, the, in my son's team, the 13s, 15s, and the, co- the teams that, that have progressed and some are still with me and boys that have gone to the A-League. And, and for me, helping now players progress and, and improving and, and obviously winning games and, and seeing things improve and, you know, helping clubs um, better themselves in doing what they're doing and, and being part of that, it's, it's, it's different, uh, it, but it, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, it's harder. Yeah, I, I get that hundred yeah. um, percent. Now you've also played for Australia. Now green yeah. and gold, you know that's the the epitome of, of what we want to do, right? Yeah. Uh, and Seva, you remember that vividly? Yeah, uh, you've what told I us. To, yeah, what I wanted to um, to start talking about was uh, the Youth World Cup in nineteen ninety three. How old are you, mate? Uh, I was eleven. <laughs> Uh, Ball boy with Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Emma was juggling. Yeah, yeah, wasn't he? yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah what, I, what I wanted to say was, I think at around about at around about that age, I was, I was at Marconi. Uh, I, I think I went to Marconi at seven years old. So I understood like the, the the club was massive back then, and you know to get to have the tracksuit like 
like what you yeah. got on. It meant a lot. Yeah. And then, um, for example, when the Youth World Cup came along, and that was the first tournament or anything that we actually got behind. Like, you guys, you guys at that age, you were like 18, 17, 18, 19. 19, yeah. yeah. So, I'm 20 World Youth Cup. So, 93, I was turning 20, but I was 19 when the competition right yeah, so, yeah. under 20s right. yeah so you guys were like you guys were the the rock stars for mm. us like you guys were reachable because there were a lot of players in that team that played, played for Marconi, Marconi yep. all right and uh, we used to see him all the time in that and um that era even for our podcast listeners right now that that 40 to 50 year old or 35 to 40 year old that, that that's our major yeah. that, mm. that, that, that that's our biggest fan base correct 100 percent. yeah so you guys were like the pinnacle and before I played with you, I just I never realised exactly what a career you actually had yeah. from from there to the Olympics. Like that that World Cup there was yeah. unbelievable. Mm. Like it, it launched a few few good careers, mm. and um, it was I think it was the first time that we actually saw football in our country. It was a ma- it was the first major tournament we pretty much held, eh? Yeah, oh, from from memory, yeah, from for memory, football, yeah. yeah, for football wise, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was up there definitely. Yeah, and it was a beacon of like, for example, like you know, you see these guys coming back to their club. Yeah, back to like, club level. That's yeah. where we want to hit. Like yeah. you guys were the the, the first. Yeah. I, I reckon the pioneers of like having us launch our own dreams and yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's because of your age, right? So the yeah. the guys before us did really well as well. Yeah, in um, Portugal, 1991. Yeah, yeah, so Portugal and even the Olympic Games, Barcelona, and then Correct. Atlanta. We did okay, but uh, yeah, the, those boys were part of that golden era. Yeah, uh, but, um, but physically being able to yeah. go to the stadiums and watch and yeah. watching and be old enough to remember. Right? Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. how was that? How was that for you? Like, how? oh look, um, very hard to sort of um, explain it. Yeah. Um, but it was it was amazing. Um, just that opening ceremony, yeah, yeah. Um, just goosebumps. Like even now, when it's funny because every time any sport play the national anthem, the Australian national anthem, I just go stiff, and I just sit there. And my wife looks at me, and she knows that I'm living the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. I understand what they're feeling. I understand what it feels like. And I remember at stages when it was happening, I'm thinking, I don't want this to end. I never yeah, want. Right. I don't. I want to feel this forever. The whole high. Yeah. It's just like the, the adrenaline, and and you know you you. For me, I played at a different level, right? I just I just, I, some players at that stage sort of struggle. Yeah, like it's too much for them, and some excel, at international level. Yeah, for me, I excel. Yeah, you my best football was playing for the national teams you in felt. the Olympics, and 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 uh, in, wow. in, it just lifted me. Um, but that that was the best times. But yeah, I, I got the um, play of the um, play of, match. of the match for the opening ceremony, which you know, I saw my mum crying after yeah. after the game. So it was it was just amazing, amazing, amazing time. And he was in Australia, like you said, we felt like rock stars. Oh, we you really been. did. And and we had to be. And and Les Jonathan, the boss, was yeah. on top of us to make sure that we didn't get carried away. He was pretty tough on us. Yeah. I remember. And I learned those things right. Yeah, you know how to how to manage, you know, kids they're getting to to ahead, ahead of themselves. themselves. Even my my young man to make sure that I keep him level headed, all that sort of stuff, sort of all yeah. that experience. But yeah, we had a and we all good mates. Um, even to this day, even to this day, I, I I talk to most of them, if not all of them. Yeah, um, and we have a good laugh every time because we obviously had a lot of stories with all the travelling we did. Yeah, that would have been even that you see on Facebook these days. Some of the old photos, like your mullet that you yeah. had. The, yeah, the, the, the well, that's that's famous now. I've got number one in mullet. Even <laughs> uh, one. Ryan Grant reckons I've got the best <laughs> that's mullet. That's so. it, eh? <laughs> it goes a long There's way. There's a few of them. That team, uh, team, uh, Carboni had one. Yeah, we had um, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Sakinis, Jimmy yeah, 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 yeah. cousin. Yeah. No, no, nah, we're not related. Par- apparently, maybe distant. Relation, yeah, but yeah, no, no, not um, and the real old maybe. school Aussie jerseys back then. Oh, yeah, yeah that, was, like, that was awesome. That's but that, that yeah, tournament was <laughs> come on, yeah, good. that was tough. The, the <laughs> listeners are gonna love hearing stuff like that because that yeah. tournament was that, that was an unbelievable tournament, yeah, it was good, it, it was, was such a good tournament. And we did well, right? Because we did well, um, yeah. um, we got to the semi final against Brazil, correct? Um, and that I don't know if you know, know this story, but um, it was Neil Law just before half time, I, I, I kicked one of their midfielders and about three, four minutes later, they just gang up on me and smashed me, and they corked me hard on my really? right, on my right thigh. It was the most painful thing ever, right? Kind of half time, I was dead. I was oh, dying. Anyway, they're working, yeah, yeah, they're working on me. Yeah, they work. They're working. The worst. They're working on me, right? They're working. Oh, oh, you got to go on. You got to go on. I, I've gone on in the first five minutes. I was gone. Bang! They got me in the same spot. Oh no! Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't read about it, right? So I copped in the same spot and that was in the me. I, I was going to throw up. Really? Um, really? Yeah. And I come off 
and we've made the sub and about five I remember you know ice and sitting down and about five seven minutes later we caught the first one and then we caught the second one and that was the end of it and that that's one of those moments that I thought Jesus you know why why, yeah, you know, why we were doing well, and not because it was me, because because when you when you're doing okay and you're in a game, if anything changes, doesn't matter where. Sometimes that's enough to sort of tilt. Oh yeah, tilt the advantage. And Brazil were a good side. I don't know if we would have beaten them, but um, we were still in the game. Oh, the but they, you've got to be ruthless. Hey, winners are ruthless in general. Yeah, anything that you've won, I guarantee you've been ruthless. You and have that's what to they be. Did. And you were. You, you, you have to be. You're playing. You can't be nice. Last Sorry? You were in the centre of the park as well. I was in the centre of the so park. So traffic coming from everywhere. Yeah. So they could have hit you five times. You yeah, would, yeah. yeah. I, I hit one guy and then I just... And they got me back. <laughs> and that's the... And <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that. But, and that's the different... That. And that's the different level yeah. again, right? And you just said you excelled at that. So yeah. that's... That, they, the, it's international football, right? Yeah. They're not going to let anything die either. No. They're, they're going to try and win. No, that's right. As much it's, as you want it. Yeah, that's right. It's, and you're up against Brazilians, right? Uh, I mean, I, I learned. I mean, I went to. I remember traveling one day pre the tournament. We had some traveling and played some competitions. We went to Chile, playing on this against Colo Colo. I think it was played on this dirt patch, and they were spitting on us before, right? Wow! And, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? Right? We were we were just kids. We didn't know, and we did a few of those trips where we learnt that. Right? Yeah. And all of a sudden, I remember in Venezuela, we come up against Uruguay, and they tried to tried to man up to us, and we just. We win them. Like, Did you? Yeah, in the in I remember Musket and me and Craig Moore and all these boys. We didn't hold back. Yeah, I think that's the part of international football we learn when we travel. Yeah, right? not, we knew not, we could match yeah. it, but physically, mentally, and and all that sort of stuff. If, if you couldn't sort of if you back down on that, then you, you're immediate. and they and they're going to find a weakness. They're, they're going to find, find a weakness, and, and you're probably here. You know, I, I know. You know, a lot of the other guys who played in the in the full national team and, and they've travelled, they would have given you that sort of example how daunting yeah. it is in, in the World Cup qualifiers. Yeah, the year ago we talked about that. Yeah, the, the second week. time round they didn't phase them. Yeah, yeah didn't. you know, and you see the documentaries of it, but it's spot on, right? And I think these days, and we'll talk, you know, our youth football they're not competing as well. Yeah, we're going to get. You know, yeah. you're playing against Thailand. We're not. We're not competing because because we're not mentally strong enough, and we're intimidated by by minnows as far as I'm concerned yeah. um, compared to us and where we've been and where we where we got to um, I think that we struggle because we're too nice yeah, yeah. alright let's take it there then we um, we, we want to get your opinion you know you're coaching in the uh, in the NPL in New, yeah. Sa- in New South Wales yeah. and obviously coaching a big club like give us your opinion on the state of the game because we know that you lost a, a striker at the start of this season mm. so you did pre-season with Charles and then mm. he got taken by, yep. by Wellington yep. do you have an opinion on the state of the game at the moment whether it's youth or whether it's senior football Look, with Charles, that was he was always going to go. He, he, we knew he wanted to go. He was trialling in the pre-season with Wellington. They decided not to take him at that time. We thought, OK, we've got him now. We want to be a platform for him to then go back to scoring goals, doing well, and then get him back in there, right? Yeah. So it happened before we could sort of utilise him for our own benefit, yeah. right? Yeah. Sort of. So he's gone there, no problem. Um, we're never going to stand in his way, and I'm happy for him. Hopefully he plays more, um, I think. You know, if he can play he more, I think, I think he can show people what he's got. Um, if he gets given a better opportunity, I don't, he hasn't had much opportunity at the moment, but that's the way it is. I think the NPL has got a, a, a place um, for our development uh, because that's pretty much the second tier, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and this is where kids can get given an opportunity. Um, and... I'm doing everything I can. I know we, we won't hold back any kids. I mean, we had, you know, players like my son go to Central Coast. Um, Lockie Sepping recently goes. There's a couple of boys that went overseas. Mm. Um, we've been doing that all of a sudden. Because we've been doing that, boys that have been sort of in the system and then been thrown out are coming to us to sort of rekindle themselves to get back in there. So we have, we have a purpose for that. Even though we're... It's a tough one because I'm supposed to win games. At the same time, <laughs> yeah, I want me to develop. You can't have... You can have both. You just got to manage it and, and balance it and make sure, you know, you get the results, but still developing kids. Yeah. Right? Now, is there is there an incentive for doing that? Like, well, that's the issue, right? And, there, and there's plenty of discussions in regards to, um, you know, transfer fees and how yeah. that's going to work. I know that there's discussions in that. Now, there's, there's got to be an economy, right? Of, it has of, to be a football where, economy. Yeah, of some sort of, um, 
you know, so yeah, if it's five, ten, fifteen, something, something. happens, um, you can turn it over, and it beca- there's an economy happening, and it can grow, right? Um, at the moment, the only chance we've got of making money is signing a player on a pro, and then he goes overseas, and then something happens. Yeah. But how many times? Oh, yeah. How many yeah. times yeah. do they call yeah. us and say, Please. "Can you save free transfer? Otherwise, I can't go." And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because and it won't happen. Yeah, right? you don't get it anyway. They don't want to throw fifty grand. On do you know what I mean? So, so. Uh, my question is, why should Marconi spend all this money in infrastructure, in in coaches, in developing kids, right? I know they pay, and that's got to change. Um, they pay to be there, yeah, the service. Yeah. Where's incentive for us to, yeah. to, to develop develop mm. kids? There, right. there is no incentive. Like, we lost 10, 12 players to the A-League from in the youth level, yeah. right? Then we have to replenish them yeah. and, and restart them. So we're actually... We're obviously doing something right because they're they getting the players from us. Well, yeah. someone buys an eight, a German club comes in mm. and takes, for example, there's talk about that qual from uh, a low qual. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, I can't. That's um, right. Okay. He's my adopted son, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he goes. Yeah. Mariners get a fee, correct? They yeah, have to. yeah, because he's a he's a pro. A pro. Right? He's, he's he's recently signed pro. Okay, right. But like for example, okay, but then you guys produce a player. He, he use, they use your club as a stepping stone. Yeah. You guys don't get nothing. You know what I mean? Like there needs to be compensation filtered down through the game. Well, the, the, the issue the issue with overseas clubs will not sign a player from the NPL. Yeah, because they're like, well, and they won't pay for it. it it's got to be top tier, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's tiers, and because we fall under that tier, we can't we can't Look, they can cash in on it. Cash in on they, it. They, they, are they allowed to buy a player from the NPL? They can, they but can. yeah, but. But see, that's the there, there's certain criteria that they won't go through. I can't go into. I, I mean, I'm not 100. percent I'm not an agent. Right? Yeah. Probably good to get an agent and explain all that. But um, but all I know is that clubs clubs need an incentive um, to to develop or even to be in a competition. I mean, what's the point of spending half a million to a million dollars? Yeah, that's I'm talking everything. Yeah, to win fifty thousand. Yeah, that's it. Like it 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 makes no sense. Most of these clubs. Are run by individual pockets and people who, who love, see it as a the hobby. love of the game. Well, ego, hobby, yeah. whatever you want to call it, right? Um, Marconi, luckily enough, have got a, a club to back it. Yeah. Um, but that soccer, football bleeds the club. Let's be honest. Oh, it does. That doesn't make the club money. That's yeah. not. Uh, it actually bleeds the yeah. club. But they do it because it's part of their history, heritage, and and, and they love it, and it's. You know, it's the same thing as an individual putting it out of his pocket. Oh, saying, yeah, that's it. Go. Now, um, we also we, we asked Flea this uh, this similar question. Um, you guys have been obviously coaching together for a long time, growing up in the game. Have you seen? Has it getting harder now to coach the youth of today? Whether or not it's in keeping them engaged through training, uh, knowing that their phones are always on twenty four seven, and look, we've seen some obviously stuff with mental health over over the time. Are you finding it? Harder to win, not necessarily engage them all, but just keeping them yeah. ready Modern to go. Day footballer, yeah. So, so society's changed, right? Yeah. You got coloured football boots. Um, you know. Um, <laughs> Imagine wearing them in '93. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't have been a cork. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I'm saying. So, Husky would have so come after you. <laughs> you've got to evolve, right? Yeah. You've got to evolve. You understand it. Um, I've got kids too, right? So yeah. I, I understand it. I understand what happened. But in saying that, I still come from the old school. And the way I see it is if you want to play in this environment, these are the expectations. And there's some that there's no, no not negotiables, you know, certain ways, you know. I'm not too fussed about people expressing themselves. Coloured boots now, that's all they sell. You can't do much about yeah, it. You know, yeah, you've got yeah. earrings, tats, all the rest of it. You can't find a black pair. No problem. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can't. You well, can't. I've, got, I've got a few. <laughs> um, I, I, I tried to give my son my World Cups and they, had a, they had a laugh at him. Oh, oh, did he? Oh. Yeah, and he goes, no way. Anyway, so <laughs> I still got them. Um, so, so, yeah, so, so there's, like, you can still have old school about it yep. and, and, and be strict and unfortunately um, it's a test and some can, don't, can't handle it and the ones that do are the ones that stay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the way I look at it. That's a fair call because, because yeah, how I do things and the what I want, my expectations and where I want to go, and I'm testing because overseas, overseas, you probably know, overseas is still pretty old school. Mm. You can't go there and do what you want. So if I don't, if I'm not doing the right thing by these players, if I don't prepare them as best I can in the environment I can, as professional as I can, to get them ready, so when they do go overseas, it's not a shock. 
Yeah. Because they won't get away with most things that they do here, right? And and I look at it as a lot of these kids want to be pros, right? That's why they're here. And that's why I want them here. That's why I attract those kids because they want to be pros. So if you want to be a pro, listen to me. Yeah. Take my advice. Yeah. It's going to be ups. You're going to be downs. This is what you need to do. And, you know, when a player says to me, oh, what? Or come in and says, why not playing? I'll just throw the question back. I said, have you done everything you can mm. in – Everything you can to be a better player. Answer the question. Honestly, they'll probably come back and... <laughs> well, they answer their own question. Yeah, yeah, they've answered it. Yeah. So I said, when you do, come back to me. But I promise you, if you do, you, we won't have this conversation because you would play. Because you'd be playing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah. simple as that. Yeah. And then, um, so we'll, we'll move into that yep. then. Obviously, Damien's in the uh, Central Coast setup. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So um, he's... So he, he signed as a youth player in the yep. appeal um, under Nick Montgomery. Um, he's had a lot of uh, he's had a stint with the A League training. He played some preseason games. He also sat on the bench for the first game of the season. Yep. Um, looked like he was kind of come on, and then there was an injury, and, it, and, oh, and the team played. was winning. The team was winning, and he's probably one more that they'd probably use if use if they needed to get a goal or yeah. chase yeah, the yeah, game, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. that type of player. Uh, didn't get on. Um, sort of this, he went back to the MPL um, uh, three games in, or four games now, uh, scored seven goals. Yeah, he's banging um, goals in. Banging goals. Um, he's playing well. He's confident. He's, he's, he's doing really well. He's enjoying himself. He's living away from home. Um, not paying, get, he's getting paid hundred bucks, whatever he's getting paid. Daddy, yeah. Daddy pays all the expenses. <laughs> of my investment. If you, you know, it's either football, or university. I mean, they both cost hundred percent. Hundred percent. So, so I, I'm backing him. Uh, I told him, don't worry about anything. If if that's what you want to do, I'll back you. Yeah. Right. And the good thing about him is, when he left school year ten, he wasn't sure what was happening. There wasn't much going on. That's when he played for me. Um, I said, you got to work. So he did his plumbing. Um, oh yeah. Oh he yeah. Finished that TAFE. He did the TAFE course. Yeah. And then he said, Dad, I want to play football. The opportunity came with the Mariners. And I said, mate, if you make it, you tell me what you'll do. He made it. He goes, I want to do this. I said, no problem. Yeah, He'd good. Go, as long as you're not a bludger. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and you're doing... He, he, so he's done it the other way. He knows what it means digging holes, right? Yeah. Where some players don't know what digging That's holes what are. That's what you want. Right, that's what you want. You want so, that hard graph at all. So he understands. So he probably look, understood what he missed too, right? Digging holes. Yeah, he's thinking. Well, if I don't do line. this, I and mean, it's not mad plumbing, uh, make oh, shit out of money, but oh, yeah. but um, but <laughs> he's he, still digging holes. Yeah, right? but he he yeah, he understands that, and he's look, he's 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 slowly getting there. He's getting bigger. He's stronger. I see his focus because I told him if you don't want this at any time, you just tell me we'll pull a pin. Yeah, there's no expectation from me. Yeah, good. Right, at any time, don't worry. You know. Oh, it's either university or this, so that you take your pick, and you ain't going to university. So <laughs> he's, uh, he's football crazy. I remember playing at Bankstown. He was a, he would have been a five six year old. Try and get the ball away from him. Mate. Yeah, always yeah. under the arm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, all three of them used to come to the game when they when they were playing. They were still young, and yeah. Flea still looks at them and can't believe it. So yeah, I bet he can't. They, they've grown up. So um, so yeah, he's the middle one, and um, he's that's the path he's taken, and yeah. um, he's enjoying it, and um, he's fitter and stronger. And I see that he wants it. I got no problem with I'll back him, and until that time where he, he doesn't want to do it, I'm not. I'm not one of those pushy parents. It's, yeah, good. I'm there to support. You him. enjoy watching him play, but I enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 better player than I ever was. I never he's, scored um, goals. He's a pain in the ass for defenders, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's on the borderline of you know. He def- over he, the top. Like he's, a, he's an attacker that defends. You'd love to have him in your team, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's improved to be honest. And when it, since he's been Central Coast, he's improved that defensive side of things, right? Because you're expect yeah. you're expect Expected to to run right. You you can't sever. You know you, don't, you, you can't you can't you can't just you can't say hey, just banging in goals and not run. No, right? no, no, <laughs> you got to work your ass. You do. And 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 and, and A League coaches will not pick players who do a lazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fair. It's, they don't care how many goals you score, and that's fair, right? Yeah. In today's in today's game, you got to be able to do that defensive work and bang in the goals. Yeah. Right, if you can do that, you're you've got a chance. And you know, he's he's he he was had a sniff of maybe getting into the squad on Tuesday against the Wanderers, but he, he didn't. Um, but you know, he's he's he's, he's there um, He wants it. He, he, yeah, good. He, he believes he should be playing, and that's that's well, the that, first. That's the first. And he he can visualize himself playing and scoring on his debut. So yeah. when that comes, hopefully um, sooner rather than later, then it happens for him. How old's he now, Seth? Nineteen, turning twenty. Yeah. Wow. Do you start, do you find it hard to turn your coach's hat off w- w- watching him play? Yeah. 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 Like as uh, a, uh, sometimes, analyzing. Sometimes, but uh, but I also understand that 
as a coach, when you have the critics, yeah. Right? Yeah, so I also understand that, hey, I don't know the full, all the information about any every decision made. Yeah. So so I never criticise, I don't like criticising coaches. I yeah, never do that because I know there's things and things I'm not privy to. There's things in that happen the week behind There's things doors. that happen, yeah. So so whenever um, there's feedback that comes for, for Damo, um, whatever, I'm onto him, I say, mate, what are you doing? You know, he's he's sort of been touted for being this aggressive, over the top, maybe too much troublemaker, all that sort of stuff. It's more that he's, you know, he's he wants to win. He throws his body on the line. He, he he's one of those oh, barisha, barisha, right? Yeah, I'd yeah. have I'd have him in my team every day of the week. Yeah. Yeah, he's a troublemaker, right? He causes problems. He yeah. causes chaos. Gets defenders he, under yeah, the he skin. gets he gets under their skin. Love to people love to hate him, right? And that's him. Yeah, you know, that people love to hate him, and and but he's 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 off the park. He's a lovely kid. He's got a goal, a heart of gold. Um, he's 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 probably more fragile than people think he is. But yeah. he's he's when he when he crosses that line, is is another beast. And and that I want that. I like that, and I encourage that to be honest. But he's got to he's got find to, that balance. He's got to find that and channel it in the right in the right area. Well, we hope all, to see. all in good time though. Yeah, he's if only he's, nineteen, if he's got, right? If he's got your mentality, My, well. That's what I said to him. If he's if he, if he can adopt my mentality and have his mum's ability, yeah. um, because his mum was a footballer, I don't know if you know yeah. that. If you did your homework, yeah. but she could score goals when she was younger. She yeah. played for the Australian girls team. But um, but he, he and I think he's getting that because because he had a hard time a few times. Even at Marconi, he had a hard you know from 18s. He thought he should be playing 20s. I said, mate, this is what you need to do. Yeah, he did it. And then he played 20s. I said, this is what you need to do. Then he played first. This is what you need Ticked to do. Ticked all the boxes. And then he went to NYL. Didn't play for a while. This is what you need to do. Then even Monty, you know, I speak to Monty and he even said, I wasn't a big fan of him. I wasn't sure if he was going to crack it because I didn't know if he had it mentally. Yeah. But he's now... But know, he, he loves him. Style of but he, he likes him because he's he he's adopted that and he's he's improved and matured and, 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 and built on what... You know, in followed instructions, and now he's understanding that things are going to get tough. Yeah. It's not going to always go your way. Mm. You don't drop your bundle because yeah. this is what can happen. Because I told him, look where you were 12 months ago, 18 months ago. You're playing under 18s, Marconi, and now you're on the bench. Central Coast Mariners. Central Coast Mariners, mate. Have a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appreciate where you have got to. It's a fast timeline, eh? Correct. It's so it fast. happened so fast, and but you have to. You also have to appreciate where you got to yeah. so then you can appreciate where you want to go to yeah, because if you start you know oh I should oh, look at that player look at that player he's getting there nah. everyone's got a different timeline in oh, their journey yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, might, he, he might be a, a he's overtaken a, f- a lot of players since he was 13 until he's now and I named them for him Yeah. so my job for me is not to tell him how to play not, not to tell him tactically or whatever mine, mine is mentally to keep him switched on and yeah. focused yeah. and not to lose um, you know, and prove them wrong. Yeah, I, I, I tell players if if you think you should be playing, prove me wrong. Hundred yeah. percent. that's the best motivation. That. Yeah. Now we're going to finish best. with um, fast five with Seca, but uh, before we get there, um, you played and coached Seva. Right? Played with him. Yep. Yeah, and then coached him. Well, play play mm. coach. Yeah, you, oh, short period. You short came period. To Olympic. Yeah, yeah, that was just um, yeah. passing by. Passing by, and I it was I had the deal on the Gold Coast ready to go, and um, yeah. I didn't want to stay where I was. There was something happened behind yeah, me, yeah, yeah. and I said, "Listen, for some yeah, time, yeah, 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 I remember. I, I could be here for, till the end of the season. Yeah. I, I don't know. Still it's, coach, still coaching. Yeah. Oh, coach, but he coached me as how a coach. Yeah, how was he? Um, and I think I think um, Flea, because I, I heard a bit of the podcast. Uh, Flea was mentioning that he's left foot when he came to training. He came to training, and the boys told me there's this play up above and bring him over and he started hitting these balls and I'm thinking Jesus Christ we're going to sign this kid and then Seven wanted more money but I said Seven come on mate you got you got to prove yourself <laughs> once you prove yourself right once you prove yourself I'll give you, you that money you know I said that because double wage <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I, got, so I spent it all <laughs> um, so yeah he was good and uh, he backed himself he was a cocky little boy um, cocky kid but um, he backed himself and I liked that and um, yeah, he, he was a fantastic footballer. I mean, he'd put Rob Molesky on a, you know, knock out these diagonal balls. And people talk about these long balls, diagonal balls. If Seva could hit a ball, you know, um, to just, um, Seva could hit a ball and, and land on your toe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, 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 and win games, you know, freak. Just, you, you know, at any time that 
that he could score a goal and, and win you the game, and he did. He did it against Flea when, when Pete <laughs> when Pete went to Sydney United. Um, Remember that day? I don't know. If, did you bring this up? I don't think he brought Flea this actually, up. Did you? Flea actually left he, for me he, for he a short period. Yeah, yeah he right. Let us know. Yeah. He wanted he, he, he wanted to give it, he wanted to give it a crack. He goes Sydney United gave him an opportunity. I said Pete, with all my blessings, no problem. He was honest, no problem. He went there for a few games, but he he came up against us. And Seva had just got back from overseas. Yeah, overseas. I, I, I remember this. And day. I it was signed a hot him. day. It was so hot this day. Yeah, so. Flea tried to pinch him, but I, I, I <laughs> ended up getting <laughs> him back. Um, and the Bonnerick story was another one. Yeah. <laughs> but but, um, but I, uh, he, he's come back, and I said, Seva, you're going to start off the bench, and he was okay with it. I was actually good with it. I actually yeah. said, you know what? It's yeah, he, fucking he, hot out there. Fair, fair call. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> not not, not the interest yet. turned up. <laughs> um, so, so, so he sat on the bench, and and the game was in the balance. I think it worked then, out well. The game, and then and then Flea's watching, and I go, Seva, on you get, and Flea's now sweating. <laughs> <laughs> he, he lines the ball up. He just goes ping. <laughs> he pinged the top corner, and I think we won like four nils on something Ooh, ridiculous. That game. Yeah, yeah. So Seva just changed the game and killed him, and Flea's. Just, <laughs> then he came back to us. Yeah, then, and then yeah, <laughs> things didn't pan out, and he came back to us, and we continued on. Um, but yeah, that was that was one story. But I'll, I'll go into the story about Seva. <laughs> His work rate wasn't the best, right? Your work rate wasn't the best. There's the thing; it didn't need to be. Oh, come on, Seva. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're right. You're right. It didn't need to be. No, you're right. But I'll give you. I'll give you a story. But in saying it, you go to Europe and you work your ass off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. I first went there, I yeah, was, yeah. I, I was I was literally. Running past my fellow strike mate and trying yeah. to take down, I was a, I, I was a very good long distance runner. As a look, kid. the way I look at it is, you don't have to, you 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 run smart. Um, yeah, yeah, there you go. Or, or, or if you can do what you could do with the ball, I could. I tell you, don't have to run. Run, right? yeah. That that's the reality. If yeah. you couldn't do what you did with the ball and you yeah. and you did bugger all defensively, then I got a problem. Yeah, yeah. So, and I and I got permission from this player to name his name. Um, so, because I have to tell this story, right? Yeah. So we're playing this game. I can't remember which game. It's, it's, I don't know. It was in the balance, and Seva's playing a gasket, right? He's playing a gasket, um, and Shane Webb runs to the sideline, and I think I was, I was on the sideline. He's saying, "You got to get him off." He's killing me. He's killing me. <laughs> Webby was saying, oh, what is this? <laughs> "He's killing me." Okay, Webby. Please be patient. Anyway, about five minutes later, I think you... I can't remember which game it was. You did it a few times. I think maybe with Wollongong, I can't remember. He's, we got his free kick. And I knew... And the re, and this is what I'm saying. As a coach, you get a feeling, feeling, right? And you think, I can't just... Everyone's saying, take him off, take him off. And this goes for every player, any player. Take him off, take him off. You, you get a feeling that this player can maybe change the game. You don't yeah. take players like that off yeah, yeah. at these moments, right? So I kept in mind and he's picked his ball up and he's pinged it and he's won the game, win bonuses at Webby's, yeah. <laughs> he's winning really and I pulled I pulled Webby aside, I go, I go, see? I go, you got the win bonus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that, that was the story with Ed Webber. I told him I'm gonna say it, but uh, oh, cheers, Webby. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that, that sticks in my mind that, you know, uh, there's players out there that you just sometimes don't take off. And I see in the A-League too. I'm watching. This is where I'm a bit critical because I'm thinking, this player can win you the game. You don't take him off. Leave him as long as you can because the players you're bringing on, they might be runners, they might be good, whatever, but some of them just don't have that X factor to win your games from nothing. Yeah. Well done, Seva. You can blow a gasket, eh? I'll give you the 100 after me. We will go... Please. Now, we're going to finish with um, Fast Five with Seca. All right. Give us um, best player you've ever played with. Oh, tough one. Go okay, right back. Yeah. That's a tough one. You've played with a lot. I'm going to say Branko Milosevic. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Branko Milosevic. Look, there's a... There's a, there's oh, a you'd have... Uh, the reason I liked him is because even as a senior player, I mean, he played he played overseas, played at a high level. The guy was um, a genius with the okay. ball, and he was such a good guy. He 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 took the young boys under his wing, and and really, you know, um, we've yeah. So I respect him a lot for that. Yeah, and I think, and he, I can I can name him. Uh, I can just rattle him off. Great players, but he just sticks out Still for me. Yeah. All right, best player you played against. Um, remember Dunga? Yeah, Carlos Dunga. Yeah. Brazilian. Yeah, we're talking about him. The captain. Captain, 94 World Cup. Yeah, so he came with an Asian team. I'll tell you this story. He's probably... The Asian team was... The uh, Asian one of the Shanghai teams, I think. 
Not AS Flugels. Yeah, it was AS uh, No. Yeah. It was. I can't remember. You might be able to search that up. I can't remember. We're playing, I think, with a... I think maybe the national team. And we're, we're having a game. And I'm thinking, this is Dunga, my chance, right? Playing in the midfield. And I'm thinking, I'm going to kick this guy. <laughs> right? And I'm chasing him around. It, it, it was solid. It's solid. Kicking no. around. I, he's, he's, kick, he's passing the ball around. I'm thinking, here I go. And I lined him up. And I went so hard, I wanted to kill him, right? Because <laughs> that's what I did, right? Um, and I... I I kicked the ground. I kicked the ground. And I'm out for six weeks. <laughs> really? Is that where the yeah. nickname Bobcat yeah. come from? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, yeah tip a truck. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just remember. I thought, you know what? So you missed him. You I didn't missed him. Miss- did you? And he and he looked at me and he just shook his head. Who's this bloke? Yeah, he did. Yeah, who's this bloke? I'm like, I'm going to put this guy, you know, in the grandstand. Next week. And um, and I did myself. And I learned a lesson, right? I learned a lesson that you know you can't just kick bloke. Respect. <laughs> you got to respect guys. But he was a great player. He was but, good. Oh, he was good. He, and he was at that peak of his career, you know, playing yeah. in Asia. But he could play. But play didn't football. he just win the World Cup and went to Asia? He was at the top of his. Yeah, he was yeah. top of his game. But he's a, he was a, he was older back then. Yeah, he, yeah. he was at the highlight of his career, right? The end of his career. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But he was, oh, you know, just player. you know. And I'll tell you another player that that. You know, Porch and Bowley, I could never get to him. Right. I could never catch him. Well, Anything that, he did, you know. and he didn't look like much, and I thought, oh, you know. I'm I'll get him. But I couldn't get him. Why get him was he so close. good? Why I don't know. You don't know? Just timing, smart. He wasn't the biggest touches. bloke, but good in the air too. He was just, he was just a good player. Good team yeah, around okay. him as well. But good hey. player, good player. Just couldn't get next to him. You know when you just can't get next and to someone? And you tried everything. And you tried everything. Yeah. And, you, and, and you just couldn't get to him. I remember that they used to visit what a player. back in the day. <laughs> what a player. Five, ten minutes. Yeah. You give him the opportunity. He doesn't need five chances. No, nah, he like needs one. Pass, right? But they had a good side too, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I was going to lead into funniest thing you've ever seen on the football pitch, but was <laughs> you're going to laugh at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> laugh at the bobcat then. No, nah, we've gone funniest thing you've ever seen on a f- on 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 a football pitch. Well, that's pretty funny. It was oh, well, that, that's the best. It was. It good. You've taken two questions out of me already. <laughs> um, it, oh, or sorry. even heard of a story. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Just oh, something funny. I don't know. That comes close, by that one. Yeah, that's oh, pretty that, funny. Looking back on it, that's the funniest thing. Lining up, the lining the someone, <laughs> Dunga, and, and just doing yourself for six weeks, <laughs> kicking the ground. That, that's that's the donkey show right there. <laughs> For life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no one, you know, not many people know that story. So. Where, where, where was it at? Where was yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. Was it here? I, I think it was at. Because they toured here. Yeah, they toured, they toured here. So oh, I might look back and I can't remember which picture we'll it was. We'll try and find so many we'll, try, we'll, we'll search that up and, try right. and send it to you. All right. Cool. Now I've, I've got here, favourite team you've coached, whether it's start, just, just throughout. Like if there was a certain team that you, you, you coached and you, you just. Or you yeah, just, I think oh, I've, I've got to say, look, I, I'm. Teams, after time, you realise they're the, your favourite, right? Yeah, yeah. Not at the, in the moment. Yeah. So it's hard to say, you know, it's like any team, like when they're winning now, they're not great until 10 years' time when you reflect That's on right. it. That's right, yeah. Right? So uh, the bank, that Bankstown team that was my first yep. sort of experience as a coach, as a player, whatever, th- we played some really good football. We were aggressive. We won everything. Um, people were afraid to come to, to Jensen, Jensen Park. Yeah. We, we, you know, and, I, and I'll tell you another story. I know we've got time, but no, no, we're but, but but we went. We played a, a semi final, a grand final. I can't remember. Um, I think it was a grand final. I don't know if you were there, Sever. You might have been. Which one's that? Uh, uh, the one. Yeah, you were there. I mean, it's, it was at um, at uh, Parramatta. Parramatta Stadium, yeah, Big Spinery, yeah. where the change room was massive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember that? We, we cut it in the quarter. Yeah, well. so so, so I'm looking at this change room, right? We're used to Jensen Park, this small little, 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 as big little as rabbit this. hole, right? So I'm thinking, I'm Probably looking like at this. this. And all the players are too far away from us. I'm not comfortable with this, right? I said, all right. And I got I got Flea and a couple of other guys said, look, let's cut, let's cut this change room into a small area like we used to, right? <laughs> and we're in this massive change room and all and we're having our team tools and I was looking I was saying I want this because this is this is what we used yeah, to home we end up winning that comfortably so yeah. so yeah, so that team there that team, thanks down. that team there was resilient tough strong everything you want as a coach and, and I never went into a game thinking we're going to lose yeah okay it's no, just it was, it was incredible it was, we used to have bets eh, between how many, how many we're going to score today it's incredible yeah okay it was just, just confidence right yeah cocky confidence but, but, but delivered yeah, yeah. The, the crowds at Jensen were 
Mate, that was the best. Yeah. That was unbelievable. Playing in front of like three, four thousand. We even beat A League teams on friendly games. We, yeah. we, 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 but we even we getting do. a preseason game, no one want to play. Us. Yeah, oh no, they, sorry, it's not that type of game. We don't want that type. Yeah, they were, we were known as being tough, right? Yeah, we we didn't we didn't hold back. We were. Usually, were, I wasn't. No, <laughs> but, but we had those players that could play. So we had a good balance, right? We had guys who could kick and guys who could score goals. They used to take the piss because uh, everyone's running around with a, a V8. I had my little lawnmower in. <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked. That's all you need. It's hey. effective. That's all you need. All right, now we'll finish with this because yeah. uh, worst excuse to get out of training. Pick a player. Name him. Name yeah, him. You, you can name him, Shane. It's got to be Webby. No, my grandmother, my, 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 it's my grandmother's fr- funeral, but he used that twice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow. Do you want to name it? Yeah, yeah no. Jerry Kalouris. Oh, my God. Yeah. Really? Wow. Uh, at the end of the year, I had a list of all these excuses. <laughs> and he wondered why he didn't play the grand final, but I, I come up with all the excuses of... And that some of them were exactly the same, and his grandmother died twice and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> oh, so wow. it was just ridiculous. It was just ridiculous. It was wow. Just, it was beyond, beyond ridiculous. <laughs> How good. There you go, mate. You have it. That's a, I love that. I, what I about some, you? What's I, the worst one you've had? I get some awful. Uh, what did I have the other mate? I get some awful excuses. I yeah. always working back. What about? I just don't feel like it. Yeah, I'd rather just be told I couldn't be. I, I couldn't be bothered. Eh? Well, that's I'd, what I tell my players. I'd, I'd rather be told that. You know, I, I tell my players I can't control if you go out before the game or not. I'm going to judge you on your performance. I had one. Sorry, a train yes. broke down. At 3.30 oh, yeah, in the afternoon. Train broke down at 3.30, 3.30 in the afternoon. Fair dinkum, mate. Just tell me you don't want to come. Yeah. 3.30. I, 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 yeah, I prefer honesty. Yeah. I prefer honesty. And I had a trialist not long ago that tells me that, you know, um, he had to go to a funeral. And I heard that he had a, someone passed away, which is fine. And then, and then I find out he's playing for his current club because he was playing against my son's team. Oh, stop it. <laughs> so, such mate, a small world. Mate, you can't lie. <laughs> you can't lie. Anyway. But, you know, players don't realise that clubs talk to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when they're going for contracts. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. All that sort of stuff. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Saka, yep. mate, thank you very much. Pleasure. Uh, it's been a great chat. Uh, a good insight into Sever as well. And uh, it was yeah, – I know you were looking forward to this one as well. Yeah, mate, really, so yeah, cause, yeah go, we go way back. Way back. So. 15 years now. Saka, thanks, mate. No, and good luck moving forward uh, with Marconi for the no, rest of the season. Thanks, thanks for Thanks for having me. Thanks. Sever, a brilliant chat with Saka. Yeah, it was brilliant. He's a um, good mate of ours, good mate of the podcast now. And, uh, yeah, he's brilliant as always. Took us way back. Took us way back. Fantastic. Now, this podcast can't happen without the, uh, our good sponsors. So we can't thank mate. Uh, get in contact with mate, www.letsbemates.com.au for all your NBN and phone needs. Rusty Penny Brewing, who are keeping us hydrated on the podcast. Uh, get the guys on socials. Get down there and have a beer with the boys. They're really good. So, boys, thank you very much. MG active keeping sever in shape looking good sever well done uh the planning station uh go and follow the planning station on all socials uh may will help you out with whatever you need for your party needs or anything like that uh ds tipping and excavations still the best <laughs> lane Penrith. Still, still the best lane Penrith. he's running around with that so for all your tipping and excavation needs get in contact with daniel severino a uh, little paper boat supply company, uh, Matty Clark, uh, obviously did our logo. Uh, it's getting cold, so he's also doing some beanies and all that sort of stuff, so get in contact with him. Uh, he'll help you out. Tell him how and Sever sent you. Ignify Legal, Ian. Uh, buying or selling your property, need an expert Need expert legal advice? Call Ian on double eight two three 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 zero nine and follow him on socials and he'll be able to help you out. Um, and Jeff Lambert. Jeff keeps us looking good each week so if you need any videography live streaming or photography needs get in contact with him find him on socials or visit jefflambert.com.au server thanks pal we'll see you in a couple of weeks see you guys thanks for listening